Hey everybody, it's Future Inventions here with the unboxing, setup, and first impressions of the Emotive Brain Computer Interface. So this thing is essentially a device that sits on your head and will allow you to communicate with a computer wirelessly. So basically brain scanning technology. It's an EEG machine that's wireless and with the software you can do some pretty incredible things. So let's take a closer look inside. We have a packing list and it shows that everything's been inspected. Then when we open this up we have the bulk of the goodies. So first off we have the Emotive Epoch headset itself and let's move this out of the way. As you can see this is quite an interesting looking device. We have a logo here on the back power switch, USB adapter, then we have the 14 electrodes, these all fit on your head, and this is a pretty crazy looking thing, but what it can actually do is even more impressive. So next up we have the contacts themselves, and this comes in a really nice looking carrying case. We just simply open it up with this latch, there we go. And now you can see we have all of the uh, conductive pads. I'll show you really quickly what one looks like. It is essentially basically a little piece of felt with the metal contact. And this will snap into the little sockets on your Emotive. So to accompany these, we have a little bottle of saline. And you can always refill this very easily from uh, anything at a drugstore, any type of saline. Then we, of course, have the USB charging adapter. And on top of that, the wireless adapter that plugs into your computer. Okay, so now we'll show you how to set up your Emotive. So this does come with a handy little quick start guide, and I've already memorized this process, so I'll show it to you. First, we want to start with the actual contacts themselves and you're going to get your saline solution and what you want to do is make sure that all contacts are in place in this little uh, carrying container and you want to put a few drops of saline on each one and you want to saturate it, get it moist, but not oversaturate it. You don't want it to be dripping with liquid so I'm going to try to do this carefully and then show you the results. So now at the end I'll generally put another drop or so on any one that looks particularly dry. That looks pretty much good to go. And also you want to make sure that you don't do this on the actual headset because then you could possibly damage it. And saline is not good for electronics. So let me show you close up what this looks like. As you can see each contact is pretty moist, but it's not oversaturated, it's not dripping. So this is what you're really going for. Okay, so now we have to transfer these onto the Emotive itself. So we're going to go one by one. This already has two reference points on it, so these are kind of just rubber contacts. Um, so we're going to take these and simply snap them in. So you're basically going to twist them off uh, the little box and then snap them in by pushing them and then twisting them on. So clockwise. And then just do that for every single one. This can be a little bit frustrating at first and it can hurt your fingers, but you'll get the hang of it. Okay, so before we continue, I just want to show you how to put these little contacts together, just in case they fall apart. There are three main components. There's a little felt piece, 
there is the main plastic piece and then if I can get this out there's a little um, metal piece so what you're going to do is flip over the metal piece so that it's like that and then you want to snap it in like so and then take the felt and just push it in and it's a pretty simple process so there we go and the last one so here's what your emotive will look like once you have all of the contacts in. So the process for putting the emotive on your head is relatively simple. Start off, you should definitely turn it on because it's hard to reach for that while it's on your head. And then you just kind of want to put it on your head. And so I'll take off my glasses. Uh, there are reference points and you want those behind your ears. Uh, you want to make sure that all the contacts are touching in the proper spots. So I'm just going to work on that. And then I'll show you kind of what it looks like when I'm done. So as you can see these two points should be around here on my head. Then we have two more up here if you can see that. Um, there's some back here. I don't know if you can see this, but these need to be lined up and they're rather difficult, especially if you have longer hair like me. Now for best results, you should definitely get the USB stick and plug it into your computer and use the software to make sure everything's in the right place. So I'll show you how to do that. So now I have the device on my head and we're going to take this USB stick and plug it in. Now this is already charged and everything, so it should be picked up by the receiver. And here is the Emotive control panel. So you can download this from their website. So I made an account, and now I'm going to log in as that user. So now as you can see, it seems to be working pretty well. There are green lights everywhere, and I'm going to move one. And as you can see, it changes to tell me how the connection is and now I fixed it. So we're going to check out all the different features that this has. Right now this display is picking up on my facial expressions through my brain. I mean that's pretty crazy if you think about it. So I'm gonna raise my eyebrows a few times. I'm gonna look left and right after I'm done raising my eyebrows. See? It works. I'm gonna look left. I'm gonna look right. I don't think it can really tell which direction you're looking in. Now I'm going to blink my eyes a whole bunch of times. As you can see, that works pretty well. I'm going to wink. Doesn't want to do my right eye as much, but I can wink with my left eye. Now I'm going to smile. Now I'm going to clench my teeth. So you can pick up all of these really interesting things and use them for actual applications if you're using the software development kit. And I believe there's a free version of the software development kit, but you can actually buy versions. So next we'll go to the effective suite, which kind of shows you if you're engaged or disinterested, excited or calm or in meditation, and honestly I have no idea what meditation means, but uh, it seems to work pretty well in most cases. So I'm gonna think about something exciting and see if it works. And I'm gonna jump up and down because that helps. I guess I'm not excited enough though. Alright, I thought about something exciting, and as you can see, it did kind of go up. So, I mean, I have to do more testing with this, but it's definitely interesting. Then we have the Cognitive Suite, and now this is really the most interesting part. So the first thing we have to do to use this is train in different modes and tell it what our thoughts are going to be, basically. So this, this reads thoughts. I mean, that's pretty insane. So we have to start with neutral thoughts, which is basically not thinking at all, which is 
actually really hard, so I'm gonna try it. So we have to think nothing for eight seconds. Okay. I think people that are good at meditation will be really good at this. So now we're going to start with easy. We're going to use push. So we're going to train my brain to push this box with my mind. There are a variety of different ways I've been experimenting with this. Uh, using muscle movements actually to try it and that doesn't seem to work very well. Thinking thoughts, very basic thoughts, seems to work pretty well. And also imagining the cube moving also seems to work. So, uh, I'm going to have it animate the cube while I'm thinking this. So I'm going to think about pushing the cube. Alright, let's see how it goes. So I'm going to push it. I'm going to try to stop. I thought about it again. So, as you can see, you kind of have to learn how to stop thinking about things. So, it's difficult. Alright, so I'm going to train this again, just to get better results. This seems to work a lot better. I'm thinking the words push, and it's pushing. Now I'm going to try to think of nothing. It's hard. It really is. There we go. And then I thought of pushing it again. So let's train another thing. I'm going to have it rotate. So let's do this one. Alright, now let's try it. We're going to try to push it. And as you can see, I'm pushing it. And I'm going to try to rotate it. Now I'm pushing it. There we go, I'm thinking about rotating. And I thought about pushing it, and honestly this is pretty scary. And it, it's, it's, the most interesting thing about it is that it knows when you're thinking about things, even when you're not really consciously thinking it. You might think, oh well, something very basic about maybe I should try to push it and then it just goes. It's it's pretty bizarre but it's definitely something you really have to master if you want to use this device really accurately because it's difficult to uh, figure out when you want to push something and when you want it to stay. It's really hard for gaming. I've been trying it and it's actually pretty fun, but I've played it with Portal, and it's hard to not walk off cliffs, because you keep thinking about going forward, you keep thinking about the forward direction, and that's what I really assign to the push command. So, you might be wondering how I'm doing this with video games, and that's by using these key things. So you can assign everything to have a bunch of keystrokes. You can have it hold down the key, hotkeys, mouse clicks, uh, delays on um, the hold time. You can do a ton of stuff. You can have it type out like a whole paragraph if you want when you think a thought. So, I mean, there are so many possibilities and it's really interesting to think about. And this goes for the expressive suite too. Then we just have a basic mouse emulator and the device has a gyroscope sensor built in so it senses how I'm moving my head. So right now I'm nodding, right now I am shaking my head. Then I can activate this and as you can see kind of where I look the mouse goes. And you can use this in conjunction with uh, the mouse key commands in the expressive suite and the cognitive suite and for some reason the mouse doesn't seem to work very well on Mac. I don't really know why. So really interesting stuff. You could use this in video games because as you look around you can have the mouse turn and pan the camera. So a lot of possibilities and I see a lot of them are aimed towards video games. So far I'm really amazed by this device. 
there are so many possibilities with this kind of technology, not just for video games and entertainment and things that react to your feelings and thoughts during a game, but also for disabled people to control parts of their bodies and wheelchairs and computers even. So this is a really promising thing and I'll get to playing around with it a bit more and then I'll have a review out. So, as a last bonus, I'm going to show you how my face compares to this one. So... This is crazy. Alright, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.